Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Newark and Sherwood series, a district of 84 civil parishes right in the centre of Nottinghamshire. Come with me as we delve into one of them. Welcome back to Newark and Sherwood, everybody. Now, today you find me on Newark and Sherwood's border with Mansfield. In fact, the Mansfield Newark border runs right through this place. The uh, Mansfield side is unparished, whilst the Newark side is very much parished. And this has got one of the best and biggest landmarks in the entire district. Welcome to Clipston. This Newark and Sherwood video is sponsored by Past Days, a family history blog by June Terrington. You'll find a link in the description. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. So taking what we learned last week in King's Clipston and extrapolating it a bit further, welcome to Clipston, the larger of the two twins with that name. Until 2011, they were both all the same parish, but now this area, strongly linked to mining, flies solo, with King's Clipston now a separate entity. A small part of Clipston lies within the Mansfield district, whilst most of it is on the Newark and Sherwood side of the boundary. Clipston was formerly known as New Clipston in order to distinguish it from its neighbour. It was built to house miners who worked at Clipston Colliery, the massive headstocks of which still stand tall over the village, looming large as you enter the place from either the east or the west. This walk will also take in several other important and historic buildings, and a fair few memorials. One of those remembers Clipston Camp, a World War I army facility which would become Clipston Colliery. To the south of the village is the impressive Vicar Water Country Park, which was created thanks to the colliery in a weird sort of way. All around the place, brand new housing is springing up. In short, it's the Mansfield village which refuses to forget its wartime and mining links, but is still managing to bring itself into the 21st century, and quite admirably too. Let's go and see those huge headstocks and see what else Clipston has to offer. Clipston's main road is this, the B6030 or Mansfield Road. Running along the southern edge of the village, it connects it to Mansfield to the west. Most of Clipston's amenities are along this one road. Here's Top Club, definitely originally built with mining in mind. You can play bingo here every Monday night, according to its Facebook page. It's located within a long line of shops featuring everything from general stores to food outlets, barber shops, and even a computer shop. The largest of these stores is a co-op. This isn't the only branch of the co-op you can find in the village either. Recently, a brand new £1.5 million store has opened in an equally brand new area of the village. We'll be seeing both of those things later. The shops here on Mansfield Road continue, punctuated only by a handful of side streets, like for example, Vickers Court. Now, take a look at the scenery in the distance. That's where I was supposed to go next. 
So Clipston is definitely well served when it comes to shops and things. You are well looked after in this part of the world. That's a really good thing. But then again, in former pit villages, that was always the case. They, they were, the workers were always looked after very, very well. And it continues to this day, at least with shops and things. Now, the, the route I planned was meant to turn down this road here, down Vickers Court. And I was supposed to go up to the top of that hill up there. But I've decided to take this off the route. And the reason for that is because, as you know if you follow me all the time, I've uh, done four others on this very day. Edwin Stowe, Billsthorpe, Rufford and King's Clipston. And I'm a little bit tired to be honest with you. And climbing that hill is certainly not top of my list of things to want to do right now. I think you can all let me off this thing, this one, can't you? I'm pretty sure you can. Anyway, that's what special sections are for, and that's going to cover what that hill is. That hill is part of Vicar Water Country Park, which was created from spoil heaps from Clipston Colliery. It's based around a river called Vicar Water, hence the name of the park. Formed of a landscape of hills and ponds, the park has a controversial golden hand sculpture, which it's said represents the village's mining heritage. In 1870, Vicar Water was dammed to create a pool. This was used as a trout fishery from which the lakes at Welbeck Abbey were stocked. It was a popular location for swimming and boating before long, and was even used for those purposes during the war years. However, after Clipston Colliery opened in 1922, gradually the pool was surrounded by more and more spoil heaps until tipping ceased in 1976. Nottinghamshire County Council then launched a reclamation project, transforming the area into Vicar Water Country Park by adding 25 hectares of brand new woodland. The park was officially opened in 1982. In 1933, two buildings were opened in this square between 4th and 5th Avenues. These were the Village Hall and the Miners Institute. It's in here where you'll come across these stones which bear the words Clipston Camp. Before the colliery was a thing here, Clipston was very important for military reasons. Clipston Camp, an army training facility, was established when work on developing the colliery was abandoned following the outbreak of World War I. The first troops stationed here were the Royal Fusiliers. At its height, the camp could accommodate 30,000 soldiers and was the biggest camp of its kind in the country. It consisted of thousands of wooden huts and it had a small railway. These are actual tracks preserved from a time when Clipston was so very different. Now the camp has been built over and there are no visual clues left as to its existence. There is though a war memorial at the entrance to the current bowling green. Okay, we continue down Mansfield Road. We are heading towards Clipston Colliery and those massive headstocks. They are definitely the biggest and probably the best landmark about Clipston. It's the one that sort of sets the place apart from other places around it. You can just, you just know it's Clipston when you see those when you drive through the place. We're heading for those, but there might be a few bits and bobs between here and there. You never know. There were a few things between here and there. For a start, there's a cadet's hut, which is next door to the first Clipston Scout Group. The next thing was something I always like to see. In the garden of one of the houses on Mansfield Road is a Nottinghamshire flag, which was waving proudly. A flag I've always liked too. Next, I passed a bus stop. There are four services that stop here, the 14, 15, 15A and 16. The 16 is the main one, it seems, but they'll all get you into the center of Mansfield. There's an industrial area next, which presumably is built on former colliery land. We're getting mightily close to that now. Oh, by the way, Vicar Water is a hotspot for angling. As such, for a long time, this building was an angling centre named Open Water. It's now Adam Soames Elite Training. Now the gigantic headstocks of Clipston Colliery become unavoidable. Together with the powerhouse, these are Grade 2 listed buildings, and they're going nowhere fast. Okay, so we've made it as far as the headstocks. Now you don't realize until you stand right next to them just how big these are. They are huge. Here we go, there they are. Towering above everything in Clipston. I'm gonna cross the road 
I can't get any closer than the road because there's a big fence in the way, but that should be plenty near enough to capture some brilliant shots of the colliery. Clipston Colliery was opened in 1922 and was in operation until 2003. It was built by the Bolsover Colliery Company and was transferred to the National Coal Board in 1947. RJB Mining took over from 1994. It was built to exploit the Barnsley Seam, or Top Hard as I referred to it back in the Edwin Stowe episode. By the late 1930s it was producing 4,000 tonnes of coal per day. At its peak, Clipston Colliery employed 1,300 workers, many of whom lived in the very village that we're walking around. Apart from the headstocks and the other buildings you can see here, the remaining structures on the site became derelict after closure and have now been demolished. In 2014, Welbeck Estates, who owned the headstocks at the time, submitted a planning application mooting demolition. This was opposed by a local pressure group, and they still stand. The buildings and surrounding land were purchased by a private developer in 2020 with a view to creating a brand new multi-purpose leisure facility. They're pretty damn impressive, aren't they? They really are. You know, it's so good to see that they haven't been knocked down. They're still there, where they are and where they're supposed to be. It's part of our heritage. And you know, in some kind of strange, weird way, they're kind of beautiful, aren't they? just majestically standing over everything. Awesome, awesome. The Colliery's management lived very close to the mine itself. They occupied two rows of housing known as the villas and the cottages. Regular run-of-the-mill workers, though, were housed in a typical model village, similar to those we've seen before in mining areas like Maltby, Rossington and Cresswell. They were very common. This eastern end of Clipston, though, was not part of the original model village as it was to be added later. Nevertheless, Clipston was still to become the largest mining village in the whole of Nottinghamshire. We'll get to the original model village shortly. Here I passed a piece of waste ground, which the local children seem to use as a playground these days. Not far past that is the parish cemetery, and outside the cemetery, that's where I came across a parish notice board. That's officially both the Clipston villages completed, which leaves five now in Newark and Sherwood. Now, if you were to follow the path that runs down the side of the cemetery, you'll enter a massive housing estate and it's all brand new. Let me see some of it there, if I just move out of the way. It's a very, very big area and it's still growing as well. Now, to end this video later, I will take a drive around that. I don't think there's really much to talk about with it, if I'm being totally honest with you, but it'd just be a nice way to end Clipston and it would make sure that people that live over there have got their area sort of featured in the video, I suppose. Let's carry on walking back through the older part of Clipston, though. There's still plenty to see here. This is the library on First Avenue and we're now starting to enter the original model village. When it was built it consisted of some 648 houses laid out around a central oval. Turning onto Church Road we're heading directly for that oval. In front of us here is a school. Named Samuel Barlow School after one of its first ever head teachers, it was built in 1926 by Nottinghamshire County Council. It's similar to the one in Billsthorpe as it's made of brick in a classical style. It was originally called Clipston Colliery School. Now we're at that central oval and this is All Saints Church. This was designed by Louis Ambler in a neo-Romanesque style and was built in 1928. It was financed chiefly by the Bolsover Colliery Company with significant contributions from the Duke of Portland, the Marquis of Titchfield and ecclesiastical commissioners. Directly opposite the church is Sushi's. It's a soft play centre and it occupies the village's former squash courts. And next door you've got Clipston Youth Club with some very nice artwork on its walls. I tell you, sometimes graffiti and art are two things which are very interchangeable, aren't they? 
that's actually really nice what's been done on the wall here makes it stand out well probably done by the children themselves actually you would have thought okay from here we've got just one more section to do and that's from here back to where i began i parked close to a sports type area and that's going to be the last landmark i don't know what's between here and there i've no idea we're soon going to find out This western edge of the central oval has changed a bit in recent times. The fenced off building to the right of shot here used to be a friendship club. Opposite that is the current village hall and parish council office. Next door to this used to be a 1927 built Methodist chapel which has now been replaced with modern housing. And that brings us onto Forest Road which lines the back of the model village. The funny thing is that Clipston was never originally intended to be built in this way. The Bolsover Colliery Company originally just wanted to extend Forest Town, a similar colliery village, over the Mansfield border. Our last landmarks are right on that border. Welcome to 7th Avenue, which is the westernmost extent of the model village, and it's where Clipston Cricket Club play their home games. They were founded in the late 1920s and were originally named Clipston and Billsthorpe until they changed that name in 2022. And there's a football club there as well, but both it and the cricket club are on the Mansfield side of the border because I'm standing right on it. Everything in front of me is Newark and Sherwood, everything behind me is Mansfield. And that brings the walk around Clipston to a close. Although of course there is still one thing I need to do and that's take the car for a spin around that new estate as I promised earlier. So let's hop in there and let's finish this one off.
thanks for watching this video, folks. Don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already. It really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my Buy Me A Coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also, if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as The Village Idiot, and I'm out.